Okay, it's time to explain in more detail the source of the progressive intergalactic redshift that the cosmologists wrongly attribute to expansion of the space-time universe we inhabit. Yes, indeed, this redshift is due to cosmic expansion, but not the kind of expansion the physicists liken to distances between raisins within an expanding dough. This conclusion is wrongly made because Unlike galactic gravitational redshift where distances remain fixed, it can be demonstrated that the expansion correlates with distance and time, of course. So despite this correlation, which is used to prove that the raisins are moving apart, this intergalactic redshift is not due to recessional velocity on the internal space-time level, but it's due to the accumulated increase in rate of cosmic expansion, the light velocity of big C outside the box. The difference in accumulated expansion over that very long period of time that doesn't show up in the galactic level, but after an extended period of time, the difference begins to surface. And that is what the physicists are seeing. So they are observing differences in the rates of expansion of the universe as a whole that have accumulated over extended periods of time. That's what they're seeing. The distances between the raisins are still the same. But after proving that gravitational redshift is the result of true Doppler shift on the cosmic scale, outside the space-time box, while dimensions inside the space-time box remain fixed, I've done a poor job explaining this progressive intergalactic redshift that the physicists have seized upon to portray an expanding universe that is in reality fixed. Cosmologists stridently continue to incorrectly conclude that intergalactic redshift is due to recessional velocity because it correlates with this time and distance based on brightness. Our physicists seem to be poorly educated in math, don't they? Because every graduate statistics class will emphasize that correlation does not imply cause and effect. So progressive intergalactic redshift is wrongly used to conclude that the universe we see is expanding at an accelerating rate and that the raisins are moving apart inside the box and that this is mysterious expansion that, but the other way is evidence of a big bang. Even though a big bang is the impossible opposite of progressive acceleration. But they have all sorts of gimmicks and tricks in order to show you how these things happen for no reason whatsoever. In prior videos, I've proved over and over the fact that internal cosmic expansion as proved by the pound Repka experiment, uh, we went through that, is both the cause of gravity and redshift in general. So Einstein, I mean, not that, not that there isn't a, a, another level of recession or, Doppler shift, but this is outside the box that things are expanding and we don't see it because everything is expanding together. So Einstein's false notion of gravitational redshift is actually the result of differential rates of expansion between any two points. And as measured outside the space-time box because dimensions are fixed within it. But light is not constrained by the fixed dimensions maintained inside the space-time box. It has no mass and it travels with the expansion of the universe, expansion of space. It travels with that. So it's traveling faster than the fixed dimensions that we see inside. So it is clear from the units in Newton's G also that these raisins cannot be moving apart and that the size of the universe remains constant as experienced within the universe. 
So since the raisins cannot be receding on average, it is important to refute any notions of recessional velocity and big bangs by accounting for this progressive redshift because that isn't the, what this redshift represents. So while it is obvious that the accelerating cosmic internal to external outside space-time expansion of the universe as a whole will eventually result in this accumulated progressive component of redshift. Now, it's been difficult for me to describe that in strict mathematical terms. I, I edited out many times where I referred to it as an exponential increase because there's an increasing rate of expansion. It has to be to sustain the force of gravity. But, um, you know, I didn't actually get down to do it, but that's what we're going to do now. Okay. So these accumulation of eons of incremental increases to big C at the rate of our speed of light, little c every second, you know, means we have a, a rate of cosmic expansion and it is probably approaching infinity, but it doesn't matter because it's within an infinite void. You see? So the term exponential isn't accurate, but even though the graph looks exponential, it's actually what we would call a, a geometric progression, isn't it? So the universe as a whole expands at the rate of little c every second, but that means with each passing second, the rate of outer expansion c must increase also at an in, ever increasing rate into an infinite void. So both big C and C must increase together and the result must be an additional progressive component of redshift over extended time. So I will now illustrate this with some precise equations and graphs, which I believe are correct. You know, it's possibly someone could point out to me that it doesn't, you know, that I haven't got it quite right, but it looks to me like this is Correct. So these equations describe the incremental increase in big C. So if we arbitrarily assign the value of big C as a starting point, C will increase each second by this value of little c. However, since little c is measured outside the box, will increase by the same proportion as the size of the universe, the actual size of the universe and value of big C grows at an ever increasing rate. Each incremental increase of big C results in an additional proportional increase by the ratio of C plus C over C, or the prior value of C, big C. So the equations represent four incremental steps of an arithmetic progression describing, describing the ever increasing rate of expansion over time. Well, we've only got about four or five seconds here, right? But this is time. So since big C is such an enormous value, this progressive increase in rate of expansion due to big C plus little c times the ratio of big C plus little c to the value of C, that change is almost zero. But the change is growing even though it's almost zero and won't show up on the galactic level, it's not visible on the galactic scale yet because it's such a tiny fraction, but it does become visible on the intergalactic scale. I guess you could call it our tail or our wake of the expanding universe. You could call it a wake, couldn't you? Okay, that makes sense. Why not? And as you can see, then from this lower graph will indicate that the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate faster than the speed of a little light c as seen inside the box and that's what the physicists are telling us that they're seeing that the universe is expanding at an accelerating rate it's not on the inside in the space-time box that we're in but it is from an outside measure which may be meaningless to us. It may be meaningless because it's expanding into an infinite void. But because it's expanding at an accelerating rate, we're going to see this trail behind us. It doesn't mean that the raisins are receding away from each other. 
Okay, so the value of big C can't really be measured inside the box, or when we can't get outside the box, and where all the points in the universe expand together, and that big C has no consequence consequence for us, being it's outside of our space-time fixed dimensions. The constant so-called gravitational redshift represents the difference in rates of cosmic expansion between any two internally fixed points. As we observe it with our galaxy, but, but the distances are fixed for us. But the redshift is telling us how much they're receding apart into the outside infinite void. So over extended periods of time, an additional progressive component of redshift will surface because of the accelerated expansion. And that's what is being observed on the intergalactic scale due to this accumulated value of big C with time, you know, and the difference between now and then as far as rates of expansion, which is certainly enormous, you know, over billions of light years. So within a galaxy, this tiny geometric progression is not visible because the value of little c added to the accumulated value of big C is almost nothing anyway. But the increase does accumulate it over time and eventually will be seen. According to the history books, it was Einstein and Hubble got together and they were adamant and correct that the universe was a fixed dimensions originally, but being confronted with this progressive intergalactic redshift they find the cave to the conclusion that the universe was continued, continuing to expand over a leftover Big Bang. And of course, Einstein knew this wasn't possible unless G could be made to shrink. The value of G had to change over time to, because if expansion is occurring in that way, the density inside must be less and the force of gravity must be less, so G has to diminish. But even he, anybody could see that it can't be done. The units of G are such that you cannot make such a change. It's just impossible. So yes, I think he must have been that smart. He was clever enough to make up all these equations that have no meaning and fool us. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, he had to have been clever enough to know that G cannot be changed, but you know, he just caved into the pressure of the day. Faced with this correlation, because obviously he either didn't understand the way the universe was expanding, and he didn't really understand, you know, relativity was, was just working to snow people, and it didn't actually mean anything, or he deliberately invented relativity to cover up the truth, which he knew. And I, I don't ask me, I, I, I can't make a judgment on that. But as the newer data that the cosmologists gather reveal an accelerating expansion, the physicists have had to jump through all sorts of hoops trying to explain why the universe expands fast in the beginning, then slows down, maybe goes backward and speeds up again as it now and will, barring any other change in its independent mind, and we will eventually explode into oblivion. But if you're halfway proficient in applied mathematics, you can easily see, as I've shown in these videos and in my book and my website, that internal cosmic expansion is required to sustain the force of gravity. That is the meaning of the pound Rebke experiment. experiment. The universe has always expanded at an accelerating rate and always will, despite the fact that internally our measurements of the size of the universe are three immutable constants represented in Newton's G. M, mass of the universe, R, radius, the fixed radius of the universe, and little c over s, which is the acceleration of expansion of the universe as a whole. Those are the units. <clears throat> so, as we peer farther back in time, the universe was much, much smaller and expanding at a much slower rate, and this accumulated difference in expansion appears as a progressive intergalactic redshift. Knock, knock. Although it does correlate with distance, it isn't because the raisins are moving apart. 
but because the universe as a whole expands at an accelerating rate to sustain the force of gravity and the difference in these rates accumulates over very long periods of time it will surface. So, what more can we say about that, huh? 